Hello all, Bike Mate Bicycle Computer. This is wireless with a little tiny teeny solar panel. Can't see that very well. Uh, this came from Aldi, I think. Yes, Aldi. Um, I bought this about a year ago, I think. So I think the first thing to do is to check this solar panel. Can't see that solar panel very well, can you? Let's see if I can get it up. No, I've got a big torch. I'll put the big torch on. And I'll put it on the solar panel. Oh yes, and that's turned on the display. Because some of these solar panels on things like the little keyring flashlights, they're fake. Oh, that's flashing DUT. D-E-U-T. What does that mean, DUT? I don't know what that means. But certainly this solar panel appears to be genuine. Now there are no batteries in this because the batteries are in the back here. There are two uh, lithium cells. One goes in the transmitter which goes down by the, the hub of your wheel and there's a magnet which just um, triggers the transmitter every time the wheel goes around once. And the other one of course goes in this unit up here. But let's open this up and have a look at Bicycle Computer. These blister packs are horrible aren't they? So I just cut down here with a pair of scissors. So here is the Bicycle Computer. Let's peel off this cover oh that's very very well stuck on and now hopefully you can see the solar panel which we now know works let's just quickly do that again and yes the uh, CPU in this thing boots up still don't know what dute means but there's some quite complex um, alphanumeric display elements in the center there some seven segment at the bottom and seven segment at the top. The big one at the top, I guess, would be for speed. Um, okay, let's get the batteries in to both the transmitter and the computer section and see what it does. Interesting, a CR2016, oh, which way around is it? Uh, plus to the top, goes in the computer and a CR2032 goes in the transmitter. That's curious. Right, I now know what Dute is. <laughs> it's Deutsch. So German, English, set, kilometers. Oh, I've got to go through the manual a bit, I think. So that was kilometers and miles. This is setting the diameter of your bicycle wheel. Well, we'll go with that. This is setting the Odo. We'll go with naught. That's setting service. Oh, the service intervals. Oh, I don't want to bother with that. Naught set kilograms. I'll have to check the manual. Oh, I think that's the weight of the bike because it does things like works out how many calories you've burnt and it needs to know the weight of the bike. You've got pounds, but we don't really use pounds here. So I'll set that to kil kilograms. Uh, 65 will do. Oh, why can't I set that? Uh, CO2 per kilogram. Yeah, whatever. I'll use the default values. Ah, and here we are. Zero miles per hour. Now I've got the... Um, battery in the sensor. So if I periodically pulse the magnet onto here, we should get a miles per hour reading. And we're not! Right, there's an arrow on here, so maybe I need to move this past the arrow in that direction. Oh, there we are. We're going five miles an hour, six miles an hour. Let's go a bit faster. Ten miles an hour. Yeah, that works. And now let's go through these functions. We've got clock at the bottom, uh, trip distance, ride time, average speed 6.7, max speed, I got up to 12 miles an hour there, uh, odometer, temperature in degrees Celsius, oh can we press set on that? No. Uh, and back to the clock. And in fact there are 23 functions <laughs> which is a lot of functions, including things like fat burn, so that's why it needs to know the weight of the bike. Uh, calorie counter, so there's sort of lookup tables to convert between calories and watts and all that sort of thing, I suppose. Uh, also can display CO2 emissions reduction in comparison to driving a car. Well, all of that stuff is fine and dandy, but uh, we want to look at how it works. We want to see what's inside this transmitter module, don't we? Now I've had a couple of goes at getting that off and it doesn't want to come off. I think it's glued. Yes, this does appear to be glued and it's making some nice cracking noises as I dig this out. I think that's come out and that could. 
be glued back in. Oh, that's interesting. That's inductive. I was thinking Hall effect, but that's actually got a coil on a ferrite. <laughs> that's really unexpected. But wait, that's the antenna. That's not inductively reading the magnet movements. No, up there, there's a reed switch. And of course it's broken because it's made of glass. So yes, this has been destructive, but yeah, I mean, I was listening for a reed switch click, but I didn't hear anything. Let's get this out because it's not going to work anymore. Okay, closer look. Reed switch soldered to the top of the board. A couple of wires coming off here. There's a transistor there, presumably to pulse current through this antenna. Um, there's a chip here, eight pins, but it looks like only four of them are soldered down onto pads. These are just sort of not soldered. So they're only using half this chip. Interesting. I wonder what uh, chip it is. Well, it's a chip with absolutely no markings on it at all. So I can't tell you what that is, I'm afraid. didn't really want to break this, but it's broken now. So I might as well complete the job. I'm going to break that solar panel next. And then the display. Ah, it's coming off, but I think it's welded closed. Oh, it's making some horrible cracking noises. Well, when I was digging the screwdriver in to try and get the... Uh, rear cover off, I destroyed a whole bunch of components down this edge. So does it still work? Um, yes, it does, but it doesn't appear to boot. Oh no, there it is, Doot. So that's Deutsch. Now if I can get to the switch oh, without blocking the solar panel, it's difficult. Oh, and it's rebooted. Yeah, I think this has been destroyed. English! Set. Yeah, so it still works, but I broke it. Now this rattles. I'll put that by the microphone. And um, I noticed actually that when it was operating, if you tip it, then it would go from standby, which is just showing the clock, to operating. And I was thinking a MEMS chip, but I actually think now that's a little ball tilt switch. Uh, which is as effective, I suppose. So that's the thing which wakes it up from sleep. That's an 8-pin chip with no markings on it whatsoever. That's a blob chip. Again, no markings. There is an inductor here. Uh, would that be power supply? I suppose it must be power supply, really. But then that's going to gobble the juice from that battery, isn't it? There are six tiny little screws in here, so I suppose I might as well take them out. There are four wires here, two reds and two blacks. Now, two of them will go to the solar panel. And I've got a feeling this had a backlight. I think it was in that list of functions. But it was extremely dim and you could barely see it. Um, I'm having trouble finding a screwdriver small enough to get these very tiny screws out. I'll keep looking. There we are, they're out. I don't feel good about this video really because I don't like breaking stuff that works. Um, and I've got a bicycle. So I could have used this bicycle computer. Don't ride it much these days because, well, I'm old. Uh, so there we are. There's the uh, back. Th yes, there's a back illumination. You can see that two wires go to this back illuminator plate. There's the LCD with the zebra strips. They go onto these pads on the board. And there's the solar panel. So that's it. Does it still work? Oh, what's that? Lull with a spanner. Oh, that's not looking <laughs> not looking very good at all, is it? I'll put those screws back in. So anyway, that's what's inside 499 bike computer, which does still work if I kind of hold the case bits together. <laughs> oh, I don't like breaking stuff. Cheerio.